Hello friends, how are you? I'm Ari Thurger and today I'm going to talk about if Charlemagne was the cause for the Viking raids. Mm. <laughs> now, before we start this video, uh, some of you told me uh, you are not receiving notifications of my videos and you miss a lot of content. Fear not, all you have to do is to click on that bell icon just below the video and you will always get notifications of everything that happens in this channel. Case resolved. <laughs> now, on this video today, I'm not going to explore much about Charlemagne himself and the Frankish Empire. I'll leave that for another video in relation to the Saxons. Today, I'm going to present you a couple of social, economic, political and geographical factors that led to the Viking raids. I've noticed that there is the general belief that Charlemagne was the historical figure that provoked the Viking raids due to the massacre of Verden. As you know, it's an event during the Saxon Wars when the Frankish king Charlemagne ordered the death of 4,500 Saxons in October of 782. Just the other day I was reading three historical magazines about medieval history. One was Portuguese, a Spanish one, a British one, and there was a, a French one. Uh, when it came to the part of speaking about the Vikings, uh, there it is again. Charlemagne was the figure that caused the Viking raids because the Vikings, in retaliation for the massacre of their Saxon brothers, uh, launched a massive campaign of raiding <laughs> to counterattack the spreading of Christianity, uh, which was a threat to paganism. And I've noticed uh, many people believe in this, and some of my patrons ask me to clarify this. Uh, I've also noticed that nowadays there is still this sort of campaign to promote hatred and create a sort of holy war of modern Azathru groups against Christians. And so this image of a holy war between the pagan Vikings and the Christian Franks is still promoted. But just remember something. Pagans in history have never done a holy war. It has never been a concept among uh, pagan cultures. A holy war is something specifically from Middle Eastern monotheistic religious perceptions to spread the faith and destroy infidels. So we have to discard the Viking raids as a sort of holy war between uh, pagan gods and the Christian god. That makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, modern pagan groups uh, promoting a holy war that never existed is because, well, they haven't let go of their monotheistic perceptions yet and concoct a reason to give them a purpose in spreading Germanic paganisms. If you are a pagan and your aim is to spread your faith, then you are no better than those whose religion you, try, you are trying to get away from. Paganism is not about numbers and having loads of blind sheep following somebody else's religious delusions. You don't need many, few but good. It's not about quantity, but quality. <laughs> but Charlemagne may have indeed contributed to a certain extent for the Viking raids to happen. Or did he? <laughs> anyway, let's start this video uh, and I shall give you a couple of factors that led to the Viking raids and then you will be the judge if it was indeed Charlemagne or not. The massacre of Verden took place in the year of 782. The Viking Age began in 793 with a Viking attack on the island of Lindisfarne, the sacred heart of the Anglo-Saxon Northumbrian Kingdom. So one would think that just 11 years after the massacre of Verden, uh, the Norsemen would retaliate and so the Viking Age began. But dates for historical periods are not that simple. 793 begins the Viking Age, but this is just a point in history to facil facilitate historians 
into speaking about a specific age or a specific period of change, great change, within a culture or a society. No one in Scandinavia at that time thought, okay, it's the year 793, let's make a surprise attack to those bloody Anglo-Saxon Christians and begin a new age of terror and aggression. Saying that the Viking Age began by the end of the 8th century is not quite accurate, because if the reason for the beginning of the Viking Age is solely the fact that people went Viking, did raids, went exploring, well, in that case the Viking Age began at least in the 6th century. Scandinavians were already raiding early along the Baltic Sea, into Finland and as far as Russia and into the lands of the Baltic Slavs, the Wends, the Sorbians, the Poles, etc. A Viking or Vikingra was someone who went on expeditions, usually abroad, usually by sea and usually in a group. To go Viking is the activity itself, to go pirating and go on raiding expeditions. In fact, Viking means bay dweller. <laughs> well, such raids on the part of Norse peoples were quite common already during the 6th century at least, 200 years before Charlemagne. But it wasn't that common to raid continental Europe, which by the end of the 8th century and beginning of the 9th century indeed took huge proportions. So clearly something happened. So. Let's try to understand what led to the increasing rates all of a sudden. One of the first factors was climate change. <laughs> it's clear now that in the years of 535 and 536 there was extreme climate events in Scandinavia, which resulted in an outstanding drop in temperatures in Northern Europe. It is estimated that half of the population living on what is nowadays Norway and Sweden uh, which were the um, two most affected places during that period, most people died due to this extreme and natural event. In fact, this period and this major event might have indeed been the origins of the Fimbu winter myth, uh, the, the event preceding Ragnarok, uh, when the world is covered by darkness and extreme snows, and it's always winter, well, etc. The everlasting winter preceding the end of the world. So, this was a traumatic event. This is the 6th century in Scandinavia, uh, precisely when we start to notice uh, raids and people going on the activity of Viking, getting away from the extreme cold to find a living elsewhere. Not only that, but the extreme temperatures greatly diminishes food resources. It's impossible to farm. All sorts of berries and wild fruits disappear, so gathering isn't much good either. Most rivers freeze, most of the wild, wild, wildlife migrates, so people are left with very short choices for consumption and survival. Scandinavia is hit by a little ice age which is quite common uh, from time to time between a major glacial period and the rising of temperatures. Since the last glacial period, uh, more or less 10,000 years ago, <laughs> uh, the Northern Hemisphere has had several little ice ages. It hit Northern Europe during the 6th century and would hit again most of Europe from the 14th century until the beginning of the 19th century. So, the sudden Viking raids were not a sudden event after all, but part of a long process of a continuum of human development in northern Scandinavia due, due to climate changes. Climate changes forced the Nordic peoples to find sustenance at the sea and at new lands. The Vikings were actually the survivors of a harsh and cold environment, where climate conditions constantly put to the test one's ability to survive. This little ice age has had a huge impact on the Nordic peoples of the late Iron Age. 
climate changes affect entire civilizations and completely changes their ways and habits. So, the climate changes also altered the geographical features of the land itself, which causes other factors that led the Norse to raid even more. In Scandinavia, most people lived on islands or peninsulas with no room to expand. The land was already quite poor for farming or too mountainous to live on. And with the climate changes previously spoken, the terrain to live on got even smaller. So without a doubt, the Nordic peoples start to set their eyes on other places. <laughs> Viking raids were not only to acquire wealth, but also farming lands and to acquire resources that simply did not exist back home. The lack of terrain to live on caused a population pressure. Within Scandinavia itself, there were many civil wars. Well, not necessarily because <laughs> they were not that united, they were not countries yet, but there were many internal conflicts and disputes to acquire land, uh, to conquer someone's fertile land, a question of survival. Many conflicts between kingdoms, clans and chieftains. There was a general climate of insecurity and great violence, which led people to flee and seek other places to make a living. But the disputes to acquire wealth and aggrandize personal power was also one of the reasons to go Viking. Many landlords, nobles, chieftains, kings, well, people with a certain amount of wealth that made it possible the acquisition of a personal army, acquiring mercenaries and build ships, launched themselves on campaigns well, to acquire wealth outside Scandinavia. Wealth not only in jewels and precious metals, but also land to farm. Fertile lands filled with useful resources. Of course, with the Viking raids and trading, there were great amounts of wealth brought into Scandinavia, which ended the population pressure and there was a general growing prosperity which made a greater population growth. And this sudden population growth made a new population pressure, which is what we are going to talk about next. Among Scandinavians, it was tradition, among the family, community, well, their society in general, that the eldest son would be the one to inherit everything and any younger sons would get nothing. <laughs> With the growing wealth from raids and trading, the population grew considerably. People had more children, which means there were a lot, a lot of younger sons that got nothing at all from their parents' possessions and properties. Without land to farm, younger sons would need to find other ways to make a living. This led to the Scandinavian expansion into Europe. This made many younger sons to seek riches elsewhere, going far inland into Europe, trade with other people, raid from other people, make all sorts of living outside Europe. So there was an increasing expansion of Viking raids. But not everyone went Viking and preferred to stay at home and try to make a living but not in the most honest and honorable way possible. Let's see. Scandinavian laws of the early Middle Ages frequently relied on exile as a penalty for all sorts of crimes. It, well, it wasn't just exile, but also many outlaws, uh, people whose penalty for their crimes was to literally put them outside the community to survive uh, for themselves out there in the wilds. Such people, as you know, were labeled Vargr, wolves, people who were kept outside the law, outlaws, which means they were outside the jurisdiction of the laws of man. Therefore, the law could not protect them and so they could be hunted down like animals. Many were those who, of course, sought these Vargr to kill them and bring justice by their own hands. So exiles and outlaws 
often made bargains for survival and made their own groups to go Viking, to raid either along the coast of Scandinavia or to raid elsewhere. Many criminals went Viking and made their living perpetually from raiding and avoided going home. Some because, well, if they returned home, they would be killed or others were exiles and avoided the law as much as possible. Scandinavian laws of the pre-Viking age and during the Viking age helped in the increasing of Viking raids and many were those who became mercenaries and their services were acquired by wealthy landlords precisely to create their own private armies and go Viking. As previously said, internal conflicts within Scandinavia were quite common. Uh, it was King Heraldra Orfagar, fair hair, during the second half of the 9th century, who brought Norway under his control. King Heraldr was a pagan, but under the political influence of Christian Europe, his objective was to conquer all of Norway and bring it under a Christian-style monarchy. So, in the latter decades of the 9th century, many Norwegians were seeking political and religious freedom from the monarchical onslaught of King Heraldra. Many chieftains, landlords, well, nobility in general, decided to abandon Scandinavia rather than living under the king's rule. Many decided to raid or settle, settle elsewhere. And this is the time when the expansion into Iceland also begins. And there was a considerable growth on the Scandinavian expansion to flee from the political and religious pressure and oppression in Norway, Christianity. Not caused by Charlemagne, he was already dead, but because of the Christian church's political pressure on various still pagan monarchs all across Europe. Now, there is another factor that influenced the increasing raids from Nordic peoples, which might be somewhat connected to Charlemagne, which is a certain imbalance or instability in trading caused by Christianity. Nordic peoples were not just going Viking all the time. Scandinavians had regular trading with continental Europeans. But as Europe became more Christian by the day, Christian traders began to refuse to trade with pagans and Muslims. And this obviously created several problems for the Vikings, or rather, the Scandinavian traders. So, if trading was no longer a prosperous method to increase one's wealth, many former Scandinavian traders turned to raiding, started to go Viking. In other words, started to go pirating. With the expansion of Christianity, we start to see Viking raids all across Europe, as far as Russia and along the southern west coast of the Iberian Peninsula <laughs> and even along the Mediterranean Sea and so on. Now, we have Charlemagne during the 8th century, rapidly expanding the Frankish Empire. There is pressure on the Germanic borders with the Saxons. Many Saxons are killed. There is the massacre of Verden in 782. And this obviously may have had a great impact on the minds of several pagans of the time. The Christian expansion of the Frankish Empire was obviously cutting off many trading routes into Scandinavia. But let's try to understand the point of view of the Danes, who were also Vikings. The Danes, to the south, lived between the Saxons, to the west, and the Wends or Sorbians, to the east. To the north, the Danes suffered with the Viking Geats, Swedes, Guttes, and the Norwegian. So, the least of the Danes' concerns were the Franks. You clearly see during the 8th century, the Danes start to build large fleets and a lot of defensive systems along the coast. Obviously, you would think 
this would be to protect themselves from uh, the, the Frankish invasions. But this Danish response is precisely due to the other Vikings of the north, Norwegians, Geats, Swedes, Goethes. Even though there was many diplomatic connections with Scandinavia, we must remember that most Vikings were pirates. They didn't care about the diplomacies between kingdoms. So obviously the Danes were protecting themselves from the other Vikings. The Danes too were Vikings, but just because they were Vikings, it doesn't mean they have a special alliance with the other Scandinavian Vikings. And you clearly see this in Anglo-Saxon England. You clearly have conflicts between Danes and Saxons, and between Danes and Norwegians, and between various groups of Norse peoples against both Saxons and Danes all at once, and everybody was having fun killing each other. Just because the Danes were Vikings, just, just like Norwegians and Swedes and so on, doesn't mean they all belonged to the same United Kingdom of Viking land. They still fought one another. So, the increasing defensive mechanisms of the Danes during the reign of Charlemagne of the 8th century wasn't because of the Frankish Empire but the increasing raids of other Scandinavians that had been going on at least since the 6th century. But all of a sudden there was a considerable growth on Viking raids during the 8th century. Because of all the previous reasons I have given you. And I don't believe the Danes cared much about the Franks, since they had to deal constantly with the other Vikings and the Baltic Slavs, who were a constant threat. Charlemagne's reign begins at 768 as King of the Franks. He becomes King of the Lombards in 774, and only Homer, Roman Emperor in the year of 800. All the major defensive mechanisms of the Danes, both inland and sea, are all from the 8th century. But before at least 30 years before Charlemagne became significant and 50 years before he became a threat, a real threat. So did the Danes predict the future? No, they were concerned in defending themselves against the other Vikings, the Baltic Slavs and the Saxons. And if you see the history of the Vikings, regardless of kingdom, their aim is always England and silver. You know why England attracted Vikings so much? Because of the silver. Anglo-Saxon history concerning the Norse and Danish invasions is always about lands to farm and silver. You know when Anglo-Saxon silver coins started to appear in great quantity? During the 7th century, more or less just 100 years before Charlemagne, the 7th century in Anglo-Saxon England marks a period when coins are almost entirely made out of silver. And then during the 8th century, when Charlemagne happens, and also an increase in Viking raids and the Viking raid attack on Lindisfarne, there is a great quantity of silver among Anglo-Saxons and most coins are made out of silver, thick silver coins, debased gold coins during the 8th century. So it wasn't just all the other previous reasons I have given you, but it was also the Anglo-Saxon silver that contributed for the growth in Viking raids. Scandinavians traded with Europeans and they were well aware of other people's wealth. Vikings absolutely loved silver and most of their raids are towards England to acquire silver. Danes, Norwegians, Swedes, etc. All those Vikings flocked to England in great ambulance during the 8th century to satiate their greed for silver. And this reason for this hunger for silver may be because of Muslims. 
because Muslims from the 7th century onwards start to expand into Europe. And during precisely the 8th century, there is already a lot of trading routes all across Europe with Muslims, who were also great lovers of silver and traded much in silver. The pagan Norsemen might have stopped at some point to trade with some Christians, because they were forced to, but they didn't stop to trade with Muslims, which is why, archaeologically speaking now, precisely from the 8th century onwards, we start to see a lot of Viking raids to the south of the Iberian Peninsula, where Muslims had settled, and we start to see a lot of Muslims settling in important Scandinavian trading towns, both in Denmark and Sweden, at least these two countries. The first Viking raids and settlements in the Iberian Peninsula started during the 8th century. Not just raids and trading with Muslims of the southern Iberian Peninsula, but also with Christians of the north of the Iberian Peninsula. Because not all Christians were the exact same. Charlemagne wasn't a threat to the paganism of the Nordic peoples. He might have been a threat to the trading routes, but even so, the Scandinavians continued to trade with everybody else, be that Christian, Muslim, Jew, pagan, and whatnot. Scandinavians still traded and raided a lot in England, the Iberian Peninsula, across the Mediterranean Sea, Russia, Finland, etc, etc. And let's not forget that Charlemagne may have been Christian and the Nordic peoples were pagans, but Charlemagne was during the 8th century and Christianity was already known in Denmark at least since the early 7th century, possibly even during the 6th century. Many Scandinavians knew about Christianity, many had adopted Christianity, and some were pagan and Christian, both at once. So trading with Christians had a little blow on their economy when Christians started to refuse to trade with pagans. So only the pagan traders went Viking to compensate for having to forcibly stop trading with Christians. We also must not forget that the Danes were pretty good in diplomacy. The conflicts between Franks and Saxons forced many Saxons to find refuge in Denmark and there was a considerable increase in warriors and more soldiers to man the posts and the defensive systems. So maybe some Danish Vikings were former Saxons seeking vengeance, but just a tiny fraction. Of course, Charlemagne wasn't a saint. Let's not forget about that either. <laughs> Along his career and expanding his realms in all directions possible, he forcibly created new subjects and forced them to convert to Christianity. In 782, baptized forcibly again 5,500 Saxons and then he ordered their decapitation. There were many similar violent acts against the heathens who did not want to be converted or lose their lands. Many religious centers were destroyed and many were murdered, raped, tortured, and only the gods know what. But all societies were like this. Of course, among pagans, you don't see immediately a major spreading of a religion and forcibly imposed on, some, on someone. There is, there is not that perception. But you see destruction, violence, murder, raping, destruction of religious places, etc. So no one is innocent in their conquest for power. It doesn't matter what religious beliefs they have. The innocents are the ones cocked in between the games of the elites. Christianity was already a religion of violence, yes, but in the hands of men who were naturally violent and in a quest for power, and religion is turned into a political tool to rapidly achieve such a power, well, obviously, things get even worse. But to say 
the Viking raids started because of Charlemagne is inaccurate. There were Viking raids long before Charlemagne and long after and it didn't stop growing. What Charlemagne might have caused was a temporary setback on Scandinavian trading, which was rapidly solved. Most Vikings were quite far, geographically speaking, from Charlemagne and cared little about his doings. The only ones who might have had certain concerns with Charlemagne might have been the Danes. But Charlemagne made them a favor by destroying the Saxons, which were a threat to the Danes constantly. And the Danes received the Saxon refugees, which was just beneficial for them. The Danes gained a lot with Charlemagne, actually. I think people make the mistake of thinking that there, there was a sort of holy war between pagans and Christians due to the massacre of Verden, because the Saxons were Germanic pagans, and so all the other Germanic and Norse pagans united and came to the rescue, and word passed around until it reached Scandinavia. And so the Vikings started to raid in retaliation for the massacre of Verden. Just because one group of pagans was suffering doesn't mean, mean all the other pagans come to the rescue. Pagans were in conflict with each other all the time everywhere. In continental Europe, pagans didn't unite to fight the Christians. And that's one of the major reasons why Christianity prevailed. Because under one single religion, everybody had the same purpose. The pagans were not united. Each group, each culture, clan, tribe had their own belief systems. No pagan was united. So no, the Viking raids did not start as a counterattack in opposition to the Christian expansion. The Viking raids started because of climate changes, which provoked various geographical changes in the terrain itself and subsequently ch change of habits within the Scandinavian society and a question of survival, internal conflicts, population pressure, young sons without land or property, law punishments creating many exiles and outlaws, necessity for trading, Anglo-Saxon silver, competition, to find fertile lands, to gain wealth and status, etc. Charlemagne was hardly the reason for the Viking raids. But in Norway, we can say with a certain confidence that Herald Fairhair was a major reason, a major, a major factor for the growth of Scandinavian expansion. But then you ask, but Arif, what about the Viking raids to the Frankish kingdom? Yes, indeed, but the Viking raids took place there during the 9th century. And during the 9th century, Viking raids were everywhere, all over Europe. Coruña, in Galicia, all over the Portuguese coast, Lisbon, and as far as inland as Beja, Sevilla in southern Spain, even as, as far as inland as Cordoba, Zaragoza, and into Italy, all the way into Pisa. You name it. Vikings controlled the seas because innovations in sailing, sailing technology, such as the additions of keels and sails to Scandinavian longships, made them the best at sea. All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I must remind you of the importance of becoming my patron. Uh, without such help, I could never acquire reliable sources to make these studies and this thorough work of investigation. So, a very special thanks to all of my patrons and, of course, a very special thanks to all of you who watch my videos and subscribe to this channel. And a very special thanks to this audience I have in here. There's a lot of people in there. This is, <laughs> this is very weird. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, back for you.